So I need to look now at SDS modeling and um, I'm going to make something very interesting. I'm not going to use the symmetry in this one, but I will do it in a second. SDS modeling is very similar to box modeling, except we use something called a subdivision surface, SDS. If I create that and I just put my cube in it, I end up with this strange rounded thing. You're looking at me going, what on earth? Right, let's have a look. Yeah, that's it, that's me done. Um, so let's create a cube and let's create a subdivision surface. And again, it's a generator and it's this one here. It's not a spline generator, it is a shape generator. And I'm going to put the cube in there. I'm not making the cube editable at this point. I've just got a subdivision surface. You can see that it has rounded this shape out. What it means by subdivision is it takes the surface, which for the cube was one by one by one. So there's only one segment in each direction. Let's show that by going to display and then ground shading lines. So it's that display in your viewport and then ground shading lines. And you can see I've now got little black outlines that show where my polygons are. If I turn my subdivision surface back on, I now have a lot more black lines than I did before. It's now subdivided by four because the subdivision editor is twice for editor and renderer. So it subdivides it Let's take these back to zero and then let's do one and you can see that it subdivides. So it basically halves it. You've got subdivision all the way around, making it two by two by two. If I subdivide it again, then it halves those subdivisions. So I've now got four by four by four. If I do it a third time, I've now got way more than I can count. Um, so we're now eight by eight by eight. And of course, if I did that again, would be 16 by 16 by 16, but then cinema starts to moan. So let's just stick with two for the moment. And I'm going to make sure my renderer says two as well. These are not particularly clickable because my cube is still not editable, but I can change my shape. I can make a tablet or a bar of soap or a very strange whoopee cushion, but it's a bit blocky. What I can do with my cube, as we looked at last week for changing segments when using deformers, I can increase the segments that exist on my cube. So this is the cube I have selected. If I turn off my subdivision, I've now made my cube two by two by two. If I add my subdivision, of course, this will subdivide that two again. So I'm getting more information. But because I've got more segments in the original what they call cage i'm getting a blockier shape okay if i want to start really changing this i'm going to select my cube and make my cube editable not the subdivision surface just the cube so with my cube press c you can see that my subdivision surface still has its green out icon which is what i need and then i can select my cube and then I can go to my polygon faces on the on the left, and I now have access to the larger of the polygons. This is the polygons that actually exist on my cube. I can't access the little ones as is. They are what the subdivision surface generator is creating to create the smoothing. But it does mean I can use all of the tools that I was using a minute ago. So let's go to extrude, Let's click and drag. Remember, don't grab the handles. Click and drag in an empty space, and I am creating something, okay? And I can use a bevel, and I can extrude that out, bevel that out, and I can round that to create this strange vacuum thing. Then I will use my selection tool, which can also be nine on the keyboard, my paint selection, click and hold, and I'm going to select four of those faces. I'm going to go to my extrude inner and I'm going to click and drag from left to right. Sorry, right to left makes it smaller. Right, left to right makes it bigger and I can expand that out. Great. Then let's go to my extrude and extrude that out again. 
and I haven't the faintest idea what I'm creating here, but it looks like some form of robo elephant. Um, but this is the way subdivision works. So if I turn off subdivision, I can see the cage underneath, the blocky cage, and the difference in information that you get when creating something under subdivision surface. So let's create another example super, super fast. And I'm going to create a cube and I'm going to create a subdivision surface. And I'm going to make my cube editable before I put it in my subdivision surface to make sure I'm not going to do anything crazy. And then I'm going to put the subdivision surface in the cube. OK, so I'm going to give you about five seconds to catch up with me if you are trying to follow this along. You make sure your cube is editable and in the subdivision surface. And then I'm going to go to my polygon tool, uh, polygon mode on the left, select my cube. You need to make sure it's the cube you select and select the front. I'm going to press D on my keyboard to extrude and I'm going to change the offset to 200 and press enter or return on your keyboard. And that does an extrude out. So you should have this capsule shape with two polygons long, one polygon high, one polygon wide. I'm then going to select my scale tool, which is T on your keyboard if you so wish to do it. Click and drag in an empty space and get to about 30%. And you can quantize that, force it to go five degree increment increments by pressing shift after you start scaling down. And I'm going to get to about 30. There you go. I've got this strange tear shaped object now. Then I'm going to press D and I'm going to press new transform. Now I have this strange pointy thing. OK, I can see you guys going, what on earth is he modeling? You'll find out in a second. Then I'm going to select the back. So you've got the side that you've just made a lot smaller. And then I'm going to select the back and then I'm going to press New transform to get another one, new transform to get another one, new transform to get another one. So my polygons are now one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to press T on my keyboard to get to my scale tool. Click and drag, hold shift and get to about 30%. What on earth is he making? I hear you say. Then I'm going to press D on my keyboard and I'm going to press apply and I'm going to get a little bit of a offshoot there and then I'm going to press new transform again. So I've got this strange, I don't know what that is. I know what it's going to become, but we'll get there. Then using my move tool, just because it's easier, I'm going to select the side of what I've just created, look around the other, holding shift, Click on the other side to get both sides. So just again, using my move tool or E, select one of the small sides, look the other, hold shift, click that side. So I've got two sides selected. Then I'm going to press D on my keyboard. I'm just going to click and drag in an empty space until I get to about 250-ish. I'm not worried too much about that being exact and then I'm going to grab the blue handle the blue axis handle and move it back okay what on earth am I making then I look underneath my creature using my move tool I'm going to select the belly yes of this so first polygon second polygon third polygon from the front underneath. Press D on your keyboard. I'm going to change my offset to 50 and press enter. And that gives me a little bit of a stomach there. And then same principle, select one of the sides you've just created, shift select the other side that you've just created. And then I'm going to click and drag and extrude it out about 180 ish. So I'm starting to create this interesting shape. With my scale tool, I'm going to grab the blue handle again. This time I'm on the scale tool, so I'm not going to move these yet. I'm going to click and drag the blue handle inwards, 
until about 10%. Then I'm going to go to my move tool and move them backwards. This is looking a bit fishy, isn't it? And then I'm going to grab the green handle and move them down a bit. Sorry? That's got to be a pound in the jar. <laughs> that's it. That, that's that's a, a, a pun pun jar, yes, I'm afraid so. Of course, we all know that what I'm creating is not a fish. Um, for those of you who were wondering, I am creating a dolphin, sort of. It will not win any awards for anatomical correctness, but it is nonetheless dolphin-y shaped in a very short period of time. Even to the point where I've got those things there, let's select an edge now, let's select that one and move it up. And very quickly, we're able to get organic shapes without too much effort. Obviously, there's a lot of you know, movement and maneuverability in what I can do here to get this a little bit more shapely, including one of these called a loop selection. And I'm gonna loop select this. So down here, loop select, shortcut, U, L, select that one, hold, hold down T on your keyboard and click and drag, because holding will allow you to quickly use the tool without changing it. So my T button is still select or pushed down on my keyboard, let go of my mouse, let go of T, and I'm back on my loop select tool so that I can select that one, hold down E, which gives me the move tool, and move that back. You can see it's really quick in being able to create and move organic shapes of some sort. Let's just super quickly go to my polygon mode, go to my move tool, let's pick that one, that one, let's go for that one. Let's go for the one, two, three, four, fifth one across. I'm then going to press W on my keyboard. Not W, um, I, don't know where I got W from. And then click and drag from right to left to create this strange block. Then with my scale tool, grab the red handle and squidge it until it's about 20%. Press D on your keyboard, click and drag to extrude up. T to scale, E to move. And there we go. I have my amazing dolphin of joy and wonder. I mean, we can do a lot of shaping here. We can make stuff a bit better. Let's go to my rectangular selection. So up here where your selections are, click and drag to get rectangular selection. And I'm just going to select all of those polygons and move them down a bit. Maybe select all of those polygons and move them down a bit instead. And just super fast, I now have some form of organic creature that any other way would have been difficult to create. And you can see just what the subdivision surface does, because if I turn that off, I end up with, I'm not quite sure what that is, um, but it's amazing to see what you can do by swapping from the subdivision and not, and what the subdivision allows you to create. We have a few questions. I know. Well, yes, of course. That's cool. Yeah, quite a few. Um, so really, really quickly, could you um, could you grab the primitive cube, drop it in the subdivision, make it editable, and then show how you get it to the point where you can then start kind of um, messing with it? So I think people kind of missed that that very first part when you kind of started with the cube. And put it in. Okay, so create a cube, and it doesn't matter which order you do this in, really. So create a cube and make it editable. Press C. So now I have access to its points, edges, and polygons. I'm then going to go up here and create a subdivision surface. If I click and hold, I can choose it, but the button itself will create one. So if I press that, boom, it will create a subdivision surface. Then take your cube and click and drag it into the subdivision surface. And I can now select the polygons of my cube, which will allow me to start extruding stuff out. Cool, thanks. Um, da, da, da. So, um, so when you're extruding in the subdivision surface, um, your cage has like a faint blue line. 
Um, Anna's asking, how do you see that cage? That faint blue line should normally be there. Yeah. So if I extrude, um, I haven't done any, this is default. So Gorel shading lines, you need to make sure that you select your cube and they those lines will be there. Cool, thanks. Um, also, could you, two, two relating to shortcuts. So you know how you got the shortcut menu to pop up? Yes. Could you say how, show how you did that quick? Which, uh, well, we've got a lot of shortcuts. We have some direct shortcuts and then we have some shortcut menu pop-ups. If I press M on my keyboard, that gives me the modeling tool keyboard shortcuts. So M brings me this menu and then I would choose the next letter to press to bring up that tool. So you can see, and if I move my mouse, it's gonna disappear so I can't point at things. You can see that there is a list here that if I press A, it will create point. If I press B, it will create a bridge. If I press D, it will go to close polygon hole. All the way down the bottom, if I press W, it will do extrude inner. So if I do T, it will press extrude. So if I now press T, it creates me to the, it puts me to the extrude tool. If I press M and then W, it will create the inner, give me the inner extrude tool. There are quite a few of these little menus. M is one of them, and this gives me the modeling ones. U will give me some selection ones. So I can, I can press U and W to select connected, which is different from M and W, which will give me a tool. K will bring up the next three that I can press for the line cut. N will bring up the display settings. So I can do N and A for garage shading, N and B for garage shading with lines, but that won't show anything while that's selected. Um, I can do N and G for wireframe if I particularly want to, which is always trippy to make people try and figure out what we're looking at. But N and A, they are the keyboard shortcuts. Um, if I wanted to say M and then, uh, you know, different tools I can use. T, it will take me to that. Do you know if we have a list okay. of them all anywhere? Yeah. Um, good question. Technically, we used to, we used to actually give away that little cardboard thing when yeah. people bought physical copies, didn't we? With DVDs. Keyboard, way, there it is. There we go. Homework for next week. <laughs> That's it. There'll be a test. Um, the fun thing, of course, is that you can also completely customize all of your shortcuts to be what you want by going to um, Window, Customization, uh, Customize Commands, find the command that you want, extrude, oops, oops, if I spell, and then clicking on it and then creating a shortcut for it. So you can create all sorts of shortcuts for anything that you want ever. Okay. Cool. Uh, one more quick one. Um, yep. Are you adding more polygons by adding more subdivisions or are you doing that to the cube? Um, adding more subdivisions to the generator when I create this is just creating more subdivisions that allow for a smoother transition. The generator is thinking about it, but there isn't any on the cube. If I look at my dolphin, I'm still gonna call it a dolphin, you will see that if I take my cube away from my subdivision surface, so I don't even have it in here anymore, I've just removed it, all of the geometry that I have made is on what was the cube. And then I can just grab a subdivision surface at any point drag and drop the cube in to get the rounding and I can increase the smoothness you can see that does make a bit of a difference to the smoothness of some of these sections 